Hi campers, it's Miss Yaz from Camp Quarantine. Today I read a really, really cute book. Um, if you haven't got it, go and get it or borrow it from your local library, if they're open. Um, it's called Andy Webb Artist and it's about a spider who lives in an art gallery and every night he goes to study the artworks and he does this really cool thing where he traces the artwork. So today I've got two activities, one good for the little guys and one good for the older guys, or even the little guys, um, depending on what resources you have at home, but you can at least do one. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to draw a spider web. I know it seems really basic, but some people will be thinking, how do I do it? So what I'll do is I'll angle my camera down for the first activity and bring you back up for the second one, okay? Let's see if this guy will behave itself, hey? Let's give it a go. Is it, is that good? Close. Yes. Okay, so spider webs are super cool, okay? There's always lots of lines. It looks continuous, right? Uh, the one that I'll teach you will kind of look like this, okay? So some ideas. I will use a Sharpie. You could use whatever you want. Okay, so here's my piece of paper. If you want to draw a spider web, right? I would always start with like some sort of star, like this. And I always do, so they all cross in the middle. Okay, so one line, two lines like an X, and then another X intersecting. And what I do is I use bendy lines like this. They kind of look like just smiley faces or upside down smiley faces. And check out what I do. I start in the middle, uh, in like the center of the web, and I do, Bendy line, bendy line, and I let them connect. Bendy line, bendy line, bendy line, bendy line, bendy line. That's the beginning. Then I go out maybe meh, a centimeter or a little bit, doesn't matter. And I do another bendy line, but this time it's a little bit longer. See that? Bendy line, bendy line, bendy line, bendy, bendy. And I just basically keep going until all of my web is complete. I think I'll do it one more time. So for this activity, all you need is a straight line and a bendy line and you can make a web. Now, if you're feeling kind of crazy, what you could do is use the corner of your paper and do straight lines like this coming out of a corner. Can you see that? Because often spider webs in our house at least, they always end up in the corner, kind of like Andy Webb. There you go, like that. Can you see that? And then I'm gonna use those bendy lines all over again, okay? So check it out. I'll start little and they all connect. Then I keep going out. outwards. So this is activity number one, okay? Tell me which one you like. This is, reminds me a bit of like Spider-Man's web actually. There you go. That's how you draw a spider web. Check it out. What do you reckon? Then you could even put a spider in there and a spider is super easy. I'm literally just gonna use a circle and these kind of bendy triangle lines there. Do a big circle. Maybe I'll get that one to be a bit bigger. Big circle, little circle. And how many legs does a spider have? Eight, right? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, other side, five, six, seven, eight like that all right so that's how you draw a spider web the second activity i've got for you is this i'm gonna move you back up so this is for the older kids or the people with um who are allowed to draw on windows um what i've used is i'm not going to use a window uh let me just get this up there we go um i've got these things you can get them at the shops they're acetate sheets, so they're see-through, okay? And they're kind of plasticky and you can cut them. 
Um, they're um, yeah, acetate sheets that you used to use for overhead projectors. I just had some lying around. But if you don't have acetate, you could use um, Glad Wrap and stick it to the table. You could use um, a, a glass from a frame and actually be quite cute to frame actually, or a window, okay? And just use um, whiteboard markers on a window to get this um, technique. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking, how can I make something that reminds me of Andy Webb tracing the artworks in the gallery? And I'll just open up to a page. I won't spoil it for people that haven't seen it. What he does, he goes to the art gallery and he traces with his web um, the artworks that he sees. Let me find a good one. I don't want to spoil it for the ones that haven't seen it, you know. This one, the Mona Lisa. You see how he's tracing her face? And I'll show you one more. He's tracing her face there. And now he's tracing the bodies here. Can you see that? So what we're going to do is we are going to trace an artwork. And I've been looking around my house. My house is filled with art and I couldn't decide. So I actually have a piece of art here that I don't even know who made it, to be honest, because I got it at an op shop. So this beautiful face like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my acetate on top of it. Okay. And I'm going to trace it. I'm going to do it in two colors, in black and then in Posca. Okay. And tell me which one you like. So I'm going to angle you down again. Remember, you could put a postcard or a picture on a window and trace it through the window. Glad wrap. Um, if you've got laminating machines, some laminate, something that's see-through. All right or Perspex, whatever you've got, really. It's just for the experience. It's very good for fine motor skills for the little kids. I'm going to angle you down so you can see. Okay. So here's my artwork. Okay. Can you see that? Here's my artwork. And I'm going to get my acetate. Okay. And I'm going to get, make sure my marker's working. Yes. A permanent marker. For me, because I it doesn't matter if I doodle on that. I'm going to do two colours for you. You can decide uh, which one you like the most. I think I might start on her lips. I wish I knew who this artist was because I love this piece of art that I found at the op shop. I'll do her nose. I'm tracing her upside down so you can see it. Okay. Tracing like Andy Webb. I won't forget her eyes, just the outlines. Okay. And I might even do the wobbly lines out here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, you ready for the reveal? Check this out. I love it. Oh my God. It's so cool. So I'm going to um, move it across and now I'm going to do it in Posca. Okay. So Poscas are these guys and you've got to shape them a bit like that. And I'm going to trace this same face, but in hot pink, fluoro pink. Okay. Tell me which one you like. Oh, yeah, I might. It's a bit wet. So this is actually real paint in a marker, okay, guys? If you're lucky, your mummies and daddies could get you one and you could have a play with it. Almost done. And I'll do her hair. That kind of reminds me of like a crown, like a leafy crown. Check this out. Have I got it all? I do. Oh, I forgot her neck. Put her neck in. There you go. Check this out. Which one do you like? I love it. And what you could do to honor Andy Webb is you could technically put some spider webs in it. Like that. Remember, now we're just going to use our bouncy lines to make the web. And this will be inspired by Andy Webb 
Artist by Marie Coote. I love it. What do you reckon? I love this. And you could cover the whole thing in webs, you know, or not. You could do a Kahinde Wiley and do a different pattern, but I'm just doing webs because of the book that we read today. I love it. Okay. Ta -da! What do you reckon? I love it. Awesome. So, today we learned about some artwork to do with Angie Web Artist by Marie Coote. We learned how to draw a spider web just using some simple shapes like this. Okay. And if you are lucky, we can trace some artwork and I would love to hang this up on my wall, to be honest, or frame it. How cute's that? All right, guys, I'll do a time lapse for people that are in a rush, but I super duper love this and I hope you like the book too. All right, I will see you tomorrow or the next for another video in camp quarantine. All right, bye guys.